You have David, a man after God's own heart, a man who God looked down on and shined and said, you know, you follow me and you worship me. At some point took his eyes off God, committed adultery, committed murder, and yet God forgave him. And when David also took God's forgiveness in and he forgave himself, he became a good king again. And so we can all do that for ourselves. And it's a hard thing to do sometimes. I struggle with that. And I'll tell you right now, I'm, in, I'm doing some counseling because through some of the events in my life recently, I've had problems with that. And I've heard some really negative things that for a while I believed. But God reminded me by re-putting people in my life that I'm not these horrible things that I've heard. And, you know, because I've made some of these mistakes, I'm not an awful person. Because of the love of Jesus Christ, I'm free. It's stated in 1 John, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. In Psalm 103, 11 and 12, David reminds us, the adulterer and the murderer reminds us. As far as the heavens are from the earth, above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions or our sins from us. What an amazing thing. There is nothing we can't do. There's nothing that we can do that our Father will not forgive us and forget our sins. They're gone forever. And what we need to do is we need to look inside ourselves and to find that forgiveness of ourselves because that will hold us back spiritually. I've heard some people who've told me some pretty amazing things about themselves and they're like, well, I can't believe I did this somewhere earlier in my life. And we've talked about it, and it's like, you know what? But you've confessed it. You've given it to God. Now you've got to take this burden that you're carrying with you. Uh, one of my favorite authors, and I'm right now blanking on his name, talked about, uh, wrote a book called Traveling Lightly. Max Lucado. There we go. He wrote a book called Traveling Lightly, and, and it talks about getting rid of our baggage, and that's the, one of the biggest bags that we have is guilt and so, uh, not forgiving ourselves. And it, I, the weight that is carried there is amazing. I've got friends who ask me almost daily, how you doing? I always go, I'm tired. <laughs> it comes along with being a dad, but also comes along with the baggage that I carry every day. But what I'm learning to do is I'm learning to take that bag and set it back at the foot of the cross and say it's yours and try to turn around and walk away. The only problem is every now and then I catch myself looking back going, mm, I need this bag a little longer. And then I go back and I set it back down. So if you think you can't forgive yourself, think again. If you think that there's no way to forgive yourself, there is. One of the ways to do that is to find somebody you really trust and to talk with them and pray with them. I do that with my small group. They've been my saving grace. They've helped bring me back to where I need to be in my life and I'm back on a path that I wanted to be on. But one of the most amazing things that I, it, it reminds me that I'm right for this forgiveness, that I need to forgive myself, comes from Luke 23, 34. As Jesus is being crucified, he's hung on this cross. He's in the most excruciating pain I could ever imagine. He's been beaten, he's been flogged, he's had to carry his own cross. He's been nailed to it and he's hanging in the air. And he looks up to heaven after looking down on these people who are scorning him and he goes, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And what an amazing example for us. Jesus Christ on the cross for me, 
Way back then, he didn't see me standing in front of it because I wasn't there. But he knew me. He knew I was going to be here. And he said, forgive me. Forgive me. I helped put him there. And God has forgiven me for that. So hopefully today, when you leave here, you can feel a lighterness in your soul. You could look in there and go, I'm worthy of forgiveness. I'm worthy of God's forgiveness because of what he did for me. So if you're here today and you don't know the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, or if you're unsure whether or not he's there and he can forgive you, let me first say that he can. <laughs> he is an amazing God. He's done some miraculous things in my life and in the lives of the people that I've been touched by. If you know him and you have a relationship with him, but you're holding back because you figure you're not quite worthy enough for that forgiveness. Today is the day, the first day of the rest of your life. And Tom gave me a quote the other day. He prayed for me. And he said, God, we can't make a new beginning, but we can make a new ending. So I'm hoping from what you get out of this is that you have a chance to have a different ending than where you may be headed right now because he will forgive you. We now have a time for prayer. As the worship team leads us out, if you need to pray, there's a prayer center on the other side of this wall where people can pray for you. If you want to come up front and pray with me, I'll pray with you. If you just need to find somebody in this room that you think you trust and that you want to pray with them, go for it. God hears all of us when we pray. So now is the time to find the forgiveness that only Jesus Christ can offer. To find a peace in your soul. To find a healing for your aching, pain-filled heart. And to let go of all of the stuff that was there. Because you're forgiven. I hope you're blessed by my talk today. And uh, I hope that you have a wonderful week.